can ask as many questions as you want. We're filming. Thanks. Here we go. So another episode of I'm in a Car. Um, I have the pleasure of riding today with Ryan Martin. And a uh, pretty interesting story. Uh, I guess it's going to kind of start tomorrow. It's going to start tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so in typical I'm in a Car fashion, we typically just get you to give us a brief kind of summary about where you've come from and what you're up to right now and what this, this journey is all about. So sure. tell the audience what's going on. Yeah. So I guess I'm 23. Um, I was born and raised in Guelph, South End, and I uh, went to school at Centennial. Um, after that, went to Laurier, Wolf for Laurier, to study business in Waterloo. Yeah. And uh, did, did an exchange program in Denmark, so kind of took advantage of the university life, I guess. Yeah, big time. I did the same thing. That's great. Oh, yeah. And I went to Austria. Yeah. No way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's great. Like, it's, it's just such a good opportunity. Big time. And, uh, and then once I graduated, end of 2016, I uh, got a job in, uh, in Kitchener at a tech company in business development sales. Yep. So I did that for about a year. And, um, and so that kind of brought me to this past April. And I guess we can kind of go into the details of I guess what happened in between there, but uh, I decided that I wanted to bike across Canada for <laughs> mental well, health awareness. Why not? Yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, so yeah, there's a, kind of a lot of, you know, as we were talking about earlier, there's a couple of different reasons why I'm doing this, but the biggest thing is just to create awareness for mental health, um, get people talking, educate people. Um, and so this ride that I'm doing, I leave on May 10th, so, no, May 14th, sorry, so this coming Monday, Right. and uh, it's a physical challenge, it's an opportunity for myself to build confidence, physically and mentally, it's an opportunity for me to open up about my story, it's an opportunity for other people to share their story, because maybe they feel more comfortable now that I've talked about mine, and just educating everyone, you know, about mental health issues, it's, uh, I mean, I think it's going to help a lot of people just for other people to know what is mental health, what are mental health issues. Right. So I think some people don't even know there's still still that that denial or stigma, I guess. So then, um, what's the name of the the ride? Mind Cycle. Mind Cycle. And is there a website people can There is. It's just mindcycle.ca. Awesome. That's nice and simple. And uh, Instagram is mindcycle underscore Canada. Cool. Yeah. So what, what inspired this idea? Yeah, so pretty much starting in, in high school, I was dealing with just generalized anxiety, I guess. You know, I had a lot of friends, I was playing sports, but anxiety was kind of just looming there. Yeah. Um, and when I got to university, uh, I started experiencing, you know, just episodes of depression in combination with anxiety. So, you know, I had a lot of good days and some bad days, good days, bad days. And then it just slowly started getting more frequent, like the episodes, and more intense. Um, and then I eventually just had this breakdown, this mental breakdown. Not like I went crazy or anything, but right. this emotional breakdown where I just couldn't contain all these emotions I've been hiding from everyone for so long. Right. And uh, I remember I broke down with, with my two best friends in the car. We pulled over, and I just said, I can't do this on my own. I need your help. I need all my friends' help. I need my family's help. I need everyone's help because what I'm dealing with is so big and so intense and so painful at times that I just need everyone's support. And so once I finally had that breakdown, I got diagnosed by a psychiatrist um, that I had bipolar disorder, okay. um, which started really making sense why I was going through so many things, like these ups and downs. Right. Um, and then I spent a year after that trying to figure out medications and committing to therapies. So it was just this long journey of you know, ups and downs and dealing with side effects of medication. It's just not a great process. And I'm still, still in it for sure. Right. But now I'm in a point where I've learned, I feel like I've learned a lot about myself, how to manage my mental health issues and everyone's are different, but I just feel like I have a lot to share. Cool. And so now I'm at a point where I want to, I wanted to open up about my story completely, like nothing, no, nothing hidden. Um, so that other people can just feel, I guess, more comfortable talking about theirs, get them talking, help them out, because once you start talking, that pressure gets released. Sure, make them feel like they're not alone. Oh, exactly. Because I guess it can be pretty isolating. Totally. In between your own ears. You get in your head. Yeah, sure. yeah. In, in between your own ears, exactly. So, um, getting people talking is so important, because once you start talking about it, you can start, 
you know, seeking the support and tools and therapy and medications if you do that, that you need. Right. Once you, once you like kind of, you know, start talking about it, you can start dealing with all the other important things and yeah. That's cool, man. Yeah. So if, if you don't mind, I'll be just go back and you mentioned that you had ups and downs. Yeah. So what, what did a bad day look like? It's funny because every time I'm in like a bad, you know, depressive or depressive and high anxiety episode, which is the worst combination, every time feels like the worst. Right. And every time feels different. Okay. And every time it feels like you're never going to get out of it. Um, and so what it feels like is, I don't know, it's really hard to explain, but not to get too like dark here, but... No, go for it, man. Yeah. Open up. It's all... So, you know, when I'm in a really bad depressive state, like thoughts of suicide start coming up right. um, how can I keep do, how can I keep dealing with this how am I gonna hold a job how am I gonna make new friends how am I gonna you know get married and have kids when I when I'm in so much internal pain like those are the thoughts that you start getting riddled with um, the anxiety just you're worried about everything socially performance anxiety and so the combination of high anxiety and a high depressive episode is really scary because you have the energy of the anxiety with the suicidal thoughts of depression so it's it's a really scary combination and that's the one that I have to be most careful with yeah big time but you know what that's that's what I deal with you know I, I can't like hide from that so now it's I've gotten really good okay if I'm having a suicidal thought that's like okay something and my mood is seriously off. Right. What can I do now that I've realized that those suicidal thoughts are just thoughts? I'm not going to take action on them. Obviously, but I'm not going to take action on them. But now that I see them, that's a sign that something's off with my mood. What can I now do that's going to be most effective in this current situation? So it's going to be if I'm at a social party, leave, stop drinking, go home, get a good sleep, maybe watch a funny show to kind of boost my mood, do some exercise, have a healthy meal. There's just so many things you can do when you have a mental health issue like you build out your toolbox so that when you're in those crisis modes um you have that you know plan in place to yeah. um get you out and, and just kind of calm you down and start helping you climb up to a better mental spot that's me that's really neat and i, I mean and, and to hear it uh you know a couple things that kind of as you've been talking a if you can talk about it with somebody well then I think it really gets though it's going in between your ears just out in the open which yeah. can be I think very clarifying for a lot of people regardless yeah. of what the situation is or mental health issue yeah. just getting it out totally. helps or even writing things down I'm not sure how that works with this situation but yeah. um, it all helps becoming conscious then as opposed to reactive I think being the next step is really neat to hear that hey there's a cue I'm having suicidal thoughts Yeah. Uh, that's my cue to then take action to do something and and then you, well, you reference this idea of the toolbox. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty awesome. And you know, and sharing that kind of approach, I think, can be really helpful for lots totally. of people. Totally, it it's so important to not get caught up in those thoughts. Like when you're going through mental health issue, like all these thoughts you have, they're just they're just like I call it fluff. It's just it's just the it's the result of you going through some sort of you know mood change or you know, there's a chemical change going on. And these thoughts are nothing. Right. But um, if you get caught up in them and you start thinking oh my god I'm anxious about this uh, you start reacting 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 you get so caught up in it and that's when you get in a bad spot and so for me it was really like you said identifying those cues whether it's suicidal thought or anxious about totally irrational things yeah. taking that as a cue to then be like okay something's going on here. yeah what can I now do that's most effective and really uh, set, your, set yourself up for success once you realize you know what's going on yeah so, that's cool it's all it's just it's just it's just a whole it's all about management and, and learning what works for you and developing your own toolbox of coping mechanisms and 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 really just uh, never giving up hope and, and talking about it that's yeah. what it's all about that's cool man yeah and i guess that's what we're doing yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. so the ride itself uh you said may 14th you're flying out I fly out tomorrow morning. Oh, you fly out May tomorrow 10th, morning. Right. 7.30. And then the you airport. start riding. I start riding, so I'll fly out tomorrow morning. I'll get to Tofino, which is not, it's not the most westerly point. It's pretty darn see, close. But it's like the most westerly like, populated point. Right, 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 right. Um, and there's fantastic sushi if you like sushi. Is that right? You've been? Tough City su Sushi. It's a shout out for Tough City Sushi. <laughs> but it's just like... 
Lights out, awesome sushi. All right. Probably best in the country. Okay. Just saying. All right. Well, that's in Tofino? Yeah. All right. Yeah. Right at the end of the pier. Okay. Yeah. Um, top sushi. All right. I'll remember that. Yeah. So, yeah, I'll get there tomorrow afternoon, which sounds crazy. And uh, I'll find out with my girlfriend. So, I'll have three days just to enjoy, go hiking, or whatever. Hopefully, nothing too, you know, injury, injury provoking. Right, right. I don't want to screw anything up last minute. Um, and then, yeah, I'll start biking on, uh, on Monday. So you're starting in Tofino, and you're going across the coast, across the country to... To St. John. To St. John, St. John. So, like, a true coast-to-coast. Coast. True coast-to-coast. Coast. Can't, I can't miss anything. How do, you, how do you ride across the ocean? Do you, do you take a ferry, I guess? Yeah. At some point? Yeah, I'll take, I'll take ferry. I only take... I take two ferries. I take a ferry from Nanaimo, B.C., on Vancouver Island, to yeah. Vancouver. Yeah. And I take one from Sydney, Nova Scotia, to Porto Basque, uh, Newfoundland. Cool. That's it. Yeah. And only because I have to. I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. I'm you not gonna put some floaties on your. Yeah, exactly. Pedals on your bike. No, no, that's cool. I'm not taking any sort of. Uh, like I've made it clear that I'm not taking any sort of rides to like help me. Like my, my parents have said, like, well, what a, if you get towards like Calgary, for example, why doesn't someone pick you up on the outskirts and then drive you to their house in town? And I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm gonna give up any sort of distance here. Like I, I, I'm gonna be on my bike the entire distance. I don't want to, to uh, cheat. I guess. Yeah. That's cool. So do you have a really good seat? Dude, that is, the, <laughs> that is the only problem with this whole ride. Honestly, it's it's the thing that's causing me the most stress. It's so funny because so I got this seat and it's like a three hundred dollar seat. Yeah. yeah. Like handmade leather for like top from, of the line. from the UK. Yeah, it's it's meant for long distance cycling. Everyone recommends it. Right. Who does long distance cycling? Right. So I'm like, great. This is perfect. I'll buy this. Invest in a good seat because that's the only thing, you know, all my weights on. Yeah. The entire trip. The entire, I want it to be a good the, seat. The entire six thousand kilometers or whatever. Yeah, distance yeah. Is. Nine thousand. Nine thousand. <laughs> don't don't shit. remind me. Yeah. And uh, so I dropped like three hundred dollars on the seat. I took it out. I got destroyed by the sea. I'm not going to go into the details. <laughs> no, but, please don't. <laughs> um, so then I did some research. On, I'm like, okay, how do you like, everyone says you got to bike on the seat for a couple hundred kilometers to break it in. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. The leather. Literally, it, when I first got it, no, that's what it sounds like. It sounds like you're like tapping metal. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I did all this research. The guys on the online are saying like, so like, you know, get this mink oil and like treat it with leather or with the oil on both sides of the leather seat put it in the oven bake it for 20 minutes on low heat so the oil gets absorbed I'm like great so I do that once take it for a ride and I was like not better at all <laughs> sorry I don't mean to be laughing no it's, it's, it's so, like it's funny how bad it is oh man and then I, I've treated it I think six times since every time just crossing my fingers it'll just like totally collapse and just like be soft right <laughs> um and so yeah i did a 130k ride uh two weeks ago in guelph around guelph and uh was on the seat and it was like it was all right by the end there was definitely some bruising um so like literally it's so funny you ask that that's the only thing <laughs> i'm worried about <laughs> Okay, well, let's, let's, uh, good luck with the seat. I hope, <laughs> come on, man, I, hope, out here. I hope it works. Well, maybe there's some good leather seats in Calgary. I mean, they got leather. If like, I get to saddle. Vancouver and I'm in pain, I'm buying a new seat. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> you're doing this ride. How long is it going to take you? It's, so I guess it's, a, I guess in general with the ride, it's, it's 9,000 kilometers. Um, I'm not doing like a practical or, you know, beeline route, um, across the country. I'm really, Want to see all the major cities to hopefully do meet some people there, do some talks or whatever it may be. So I'm kind of doing like this, you know, wave of a route uh, cool. across the country, not straight across. So what major cities are you hitting? I hit all of them. Um, yeah, like you name it, all the major cities in each province, like the bigger cities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, Calgary, yeah. Edmonton, Regina, Saskatoon, Winnipeg, Ottawa, Montreal, Quebec City, Moncton, Charlottetown, Halifax, St. John. Awesome. Hopefully, you, know, yeah, you get there. Yeah, yeah. We'll see it with the seat. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm thinking it'll take. I planned with no extra days for like, I don't know, talking to people. If I stick to like a rest day every six days, a rest day when I get to Guelph, a rest day when I get to my cottage, 
and pretty much stick to that, I'll be done in 120 days. So that's that's more than three months. <laughs> that's four months. Yeah, that's four months. I think that was that was like my max. Right. Yeah. So I, I think I'm going to be anywhere anywhere between three and four months. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, I was like 120. Like, holy quick, shit. quick math here. That's <laughs> not three months. So um, if, if someone, you mentioned this idea of doing talks. What do you mean? Yeah, so I'm working with the Canadian Mental Health Association, which is a charity I'm fundraising for, as well as BMO on a national level, I think of Montreal. Yeah. Um, so both of those organizations have a marketing team that I'm working with to generate awareness across the country. So BMO is doing work with all the branches. Um, they're spreading the word and then in each major city I'm going to stop at like the flagship branch of that city and if they're interested to meet I'll go in and talk to people and if people want to join me for a couple kilometers you know maybe do like a quick talk or something it's all it's only if they want to of course, yeah, of course. Gonna force it obviously yeah, that's um, cool. and then the Canadian Mental Health Association CMHA they have branches across the country as well so they're, I'm also going to be meeting with their branches across the country and do, meeting them. So these are the, kind of like the talks I guess I'm going to be doing. Yeah, that's great. And it's really nice because both BMO and CMHA, are, their marketing teams, are going to do press releases for my ride in every major city I go through. Awesome. So it's going to be nice. Like two reputable organizations, you know, both doing press releases with my story, you know, from, from the, like, kind of like corporate banking, not-for-profit. I think it's kind of a, a good way for me to get a lot of attraction yeah. or attraction, attraction sorry attraction. yeah and awareness so I have no idea where this is gonna go you know even if it stopped today um, and I just did the bike ride and didn't talk to anyone else I'd be totally satisfied with what happened you know, we've raised $25,000 already yeah amazing and uh, I've talked to a bunch of people I've went back to my high school I've talked to talk to my company, I've talked to friends, I went to Conestoga College talking to people. So like it's been such a rewarding, fulfilling experience. As I said, I could stop right now and I would you know, I could walk away from this and be, you know, totally happy with what's happened. So anything from now on is just gravy. Awesome man. Yeah. So is there a like a fundraising goal? I said it as um a hundred thousand. Boom. Yeah. And there's kind of a story behind that. Um like the number 100 means a lot to me. I got like a tattoo um, with it, and the reason being is because. Well, you gotta show people your pipes. Oh, I won't flex. <laughs> it won't move. <laughs> they won't get any bigger, yeah, trust okay. me. So what's that? All this cardio. Um, <laughs> <laughs> nice. uh, so last year, when I was going through, after I got diagnosed with bipolar, I was going through the whole process of trialing medications and creating that cocktail of medication that's gonna work for me. and going through a lot of side effects and it was really making the depression anxiety a lot worse so it was a, t it was a tough year yeah. and so um i thought like what's a way i can kind of get some structure in my life like some kiss consistency because i was just constantly changing with my mood so i signed up for a hundred mile race uh, cycling race in collingwood yeah it's called the centurion and i use that as kind of a way to you know Here's my schedule. Every morning, or almost every morning, wake up, go for a ride. On the weekends, go for a ride. You know, it was, I just had a lot more structure in my life. And so that really helped me push through all these ups and downs I was still experiencing. And when I did the ride, it was one of the most rewarding experiences of my life because I just realized that like, no matter how bad it gets, I can still like persevere and push through these ups and downs. And no matter, no matter what I'm doing, no matter how bad I feel, for a presentation at work, I can I can get it done and I, I can be good enough. No matter how anxious I feel with my friends, I can I can do it. I'm good enough. And that and this ride was really just like uh, a representation of that throughout my whole life. Cool, man. And so when I thought of so that's why 100 miles means a lot to me. And so when I thought of the fundraising number, I think I initially I said 15,000 right. because I wanted to be modest and like sure. not get like yeah I didn't want to be like you know, demotivated if I didn't hit it. Right. And then, like, immediately, I got, my first day of doing it, I think I was at, like, $3,000, and I said, you know what? Like, who, who cares if I don't hit my goal? Like, why don't I just set, like, a really high goal and just go with it? Yeah. Because whatever, it doesn't matter. You know, any money is good. And so I said, "What? I'm, I'm changing it. I'm doing 100000 And so I'm a quarter of the way there. Yeah, you, yeah, you started. <laughs> and I haven't started. And I think, I think 
I feel good about it, you know, there's a lot of good things going on for people helping raise money, and, um, yeah, so I feel good about it, we'll see what happens. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, you got 500 bucks for me. Do I? Yeah, for sure. Nice. And can I donate on your website? Yeah, that's yeah. amazing, okay. thank you. Yeah, of course, man. I appreciate that. Go get it. Yeah. So anyway, that's a challenge, I guess anybody watching this video, I gave 500 bucks, you can pony up 10 bucks, or 20 bucks, or 50 bucks. Whatever. Doesn't uh, matter. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah, and, and, um... The most important thing here is just like spreading the word because as we talked about earlier, there's a lot of people going through this kind of stuff and they're totally stuck between their ears. And you know, if people can hear my story, I think that might give them a little bit of comfort that like we said, they're not alone. And so the whole, like the money's great here, but the most, the most important part is like spreading the word on what's, what this is all about. Yeah. Cause I think it's, it's already helped a lot of people and, it's, and it just has the potential to really help people. It's helped me. It's helped friends and family that have reached out to me. Um, so yeah. Well, I think, I think the, the story that you shared with us today, um, you know, is, is like, a, uh, I wouldn't say an extreme example of, of mental health issues, but it's like, you know, a bigger one. Yeah. But I think a lot of times from my perspective anyway, I think mental health is something good, bad, you know, mediocre, whatever, it, it ranges in terms of severity. Totally. And everybody goes, feels something, yeah. you know, like, and, you know, yeah, not, not to make light of it, but I think lots of people can draw on lessons like what you said before about, yeah. hey, what are the emotional or thoughts that you're having or emotional cues or thoughts, like cues of thoughts yep. that are going through someone's mind in a situation where they then show up in the world the way they don't want to show up, whether it's, you know, in, in one case very severe yep. and in other cases maybe not so severe but the idea of like seeing and being conscious of those types of cues totally. to then take action I think anybody can that's take a, good a skill. lesson from that totally yeah, that's it great. applies to and, and that's like those skills I'm talking about like it's not like I've come up with these on my own like these are all part of um, lessons I've learned through certain therapies yeah that's cool. um, dialectical behavioral therapy and it's funny because it's DBT therapy, that's what it's called. Yeah. And it's it's literally, a lot of people going through mental health issues do it because it provides you with a lot of tools to kind of manage. But it's literally just like a how to live effectively course. Right. You know, <laughs> you know like, like, we always joke, like, I wish everyone knew these skills. You know, like, how to capture or how to identify these thoughts that are totally irrational, right. not act on them, and then just identify them and then do what's most effective. Like, who wouldn't benefit from that? Yeah, well, and it's like, interesting, too, because it's like it's waking people up. You know, like, I, I find, in my experience, uh, a lot of people react uh, unconsciously. Yeah. So they show totally. up and they just do and react subconsciously. Reactively, yeah. Yeah, and versus responding consciously. Yeah. And so I think that's just amazing. You yeah. start becoming conscious of what's going on between your ears. Totally. And you can really start to take control. You just live so much more effectively. You can help school or relationships work whatever so it's a good definitely a good skill cool man yeah. so the website again mindcycle.ca mindcycle.ca oh, mindcycle and the goal is 100 grand 100 grand you're starting well, your ride hopefully on. when i come back in three to four months i'll be there or yeah more. for sure i think you're gonna crush it personally <laughs> um and if they if you want to follow you on your ride what do they do um my website is great. It has my route on there. It has all the pictures from my Instagram feed. So anyone who's not on Instagram can go there. Uh, if you are on Instagram, my account is mindcycle underscore Canada. Cool. And that's really where I'm, you know, building out. It's kind of, I treat it as like an educational, you know, resource base. Like I'm going to have pictures of, you know, scenic stuff and who I'm meeting, but a lot of it's going to be, you know, in the caption of like what I've learned, what I'm dealing with, like just helping people kind of break down or just start that conversation. Cool, man. So I think it's like a good little project. That's um, awesome. I think a lot of people will benefit from it. So yeah. So mindcycle.ca and mindcycle underscore Canada for your Instagram. Yeah, that's right. Thanks for being this, Ryan. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, that was nice. Sure. Really fun. See you guys.